So it's a, a case of refractive riot in the eye. And this patient was a very important patient for us because this patient had come for a refractive surgery because he wanted to go through his police interview without a hassle and get a job. So he had a, a refractive error of around minus 16 and we decided to do a fakic eye well in both the eyes. This is the second eye of the patient. The first eye of the patient went on very well. And the second eye of the patient is where we had trouble. So initially we did a smooth fakic IOL, the IOL went in, he achieved 6-9 vision which was the requirement for his recruitment, he was recruited and after that, after 6 months, he suddenly said he had diminution of vision and he came back to us and we saw that he had retina detachment. The retina detachment was immediately referred to our consultant of the vitro retina and he took it up and settle the retina. After settling the retina in the post-operative period, the vision improved to 624. And he went back to his job with a vision of 624, which was allowable because this patient had already been recruited. After some time, and that is just within three months, this was the situation which he came back with. And This patient had a total hypermature cataract. The ICL was in place. You can see the PI that was done initially during the fakic IOL implant. At that time, we did not have the V4C. And there was a synechia there, which you can see, and the synechia had to be teased off. This synechia was teased off. I did not, uh, I was apprehending many problems in this patient because this was a patient in which two surgeries had already been done. So removing the synechia from the surface of the ICL was not so difficult. The next part was also not difficult and I floated up the ICL with high molecular weight viscoelastic between the ICL and the anterior capsule. Next, one of the ICL foot plates were lifted and as you can see, I have grasped the foot plate with the forceps, which is a very special forceps made by the manufacturer, and which is the implantation loading forceps, as well as the forceps which we have to use when it has to be removed. So this removal is a very important procedure. You do not have to make an incision more than 2.8 millimeters, and if you want to take it out through the existing incision, that is also possible and allowable. So a hand over hand technique is followed and the ICL very, very nicely comes out. So there was no issue in the removal of the ICL and the ICL came, back, came out intact. But the next part was difficult. I had already stained with high molecular weight viscoelastic and therefore the anterior capsule was not amenable to a very good stain. So because of the high molecular weight that had already gone in. So I have to put in uh, the tripan blue, and I did put in the tripan blue after washing the anterior chamber nicely with, uh, with uh, BSS, and uh, got a stain that was okay. So the first nick, and I knew that, there, and there you are, the rexis is running out. So immediately, again, tamponade with high molecular weight viscoelastic, and removal of the milky cortex from within by a cannula. Next is taking the utrata and gradually fashioning the rexis, which is the toughest thing. And if I can get this part right, I know I have won my battle. But as it completes half the circle, then things go wrong. And he, you remember, this was the place where the synechia was. So there was some amount of addition, and there you are. The rexis has run out in another quadrant. So we have two rexis run outs. One on the left side and the other uh, on the far side, that is the nasal side. And the pupil is shrinking. So I have an open capsular bag, and this is a hypermature cataract. Removing the cortex is not so difficult, and I do understand that. But remembering the fact that why could this hypermature cataract in three months' time could have been. The possibility was, and now it is very clear, you can see that plaque sitting on the posterior capsule. And what is that plaque all about? The plaque is all about a 
lens touch that had occurred during the vitreous surgery. And <clears throat> very fortunately, I had my retina colleague just in the next room, and Dr. Rupak Biswas was called in, and I asked him, what do I do at this stage? Because as of now, the plaque is there, it's an open bag, what do I do to this plaque? Because with this plaque, the patient is not going to get any improvement of vision. Rupak Biswas uh, will live a thousand years, he has just come in. So he came into my OT, and as I implanted the as I implanted the lens, <clears throat> so he advised me that what I need to do is to make an opening in that plaque, but it should not be more than the plaque size, because remembering the fact that it is an open capsule, if it goes beyond the region of the plaque, then it might run out and we might lose the whole bag. So what we did is, after placing this three-piece IUL, and you, you do understand why I placed this three-piece IUL, because I'm not sure whether the IUL will ever go into a bag, and therefore I need to place a three-piece IUL. Next is we, uh, we lifted the ICL with high molecular weight viscoelastic, and then used the cutter, and you can see that I'm using uh, the manipulator to, uh, to, uh, to have the ICL in place and using the cutter very, very cautiously so as to not to go beyond the plaque, I have fashioned a small, small opening in the posterior capsule. Now will this opening be adequate or not is definitely something that we need to think about, but we do not want to lose the bag at this stage and therefore whatever I can do and whatever cautiously I can do I have done and I remove the molecular weight viscoelastic. <coughs> if at all this uh, PC needs to be opened up a little more. It can be done at another setting. Yes, will a YAG suffice? No. So for such a thick capsule, a thick plaque, YAG will never suffice. Then you have to go through the pars plana, which was the advice that uh, Rupa gave me, that if at all in the next stage we require to open it up or make it larger, then we have to go through the pars plana. And post-operatively, this was what we were achieved. You can see the very irregular opening, but the patient got back around 660 vision. Six, so 612, 624 after the VR surgery, and now 660. Now, we tried with the refraction, we tried making uh, the best corrected visual equity, but it did not improve beyond 660. So we are still holding on. Maybe if uh, required, we might increase the size of the opening, but as of now, this is the situation, and uh, patient is not very keen to go in for another surgery, but we can always tell him that if it, his vision improves, then we can always enlarge this opening. Thank you very much.